This is Owen. He was from Ireland. He was standing on the pier at Huntington Beach with uh, three of his friends, and they appointed him as a spokesman to come on camera. He was an atheist uh, who listened to what I was saying, very reasonable, and actually the ending uh, took me by surprise. So I hope you enjoy this. Where are you from? I'm from Ireland. And you just arrived in Southern California? Yeah, I've been you missed, in. You missed our big earthquake. I did, yeah. Luckily, I was down enough south. You're from Ireland. You've had a Catholic background? No, I'm actually Protestant. Uh, Protestant background, yes. Does that cause problems? Uh, not really, no. Not too much problem. It used to. It did. It did use, but not... In Ireland's history, it's a yeah. bloody history between Catholics and Protestants. Yeah, that's cr- that would be correct, yeah. So you're an atheist? I would be considered one now, yes. Yeah, tell me, why are you an atheist? I don't know. I think I'm just a realistic person, and I don't think... Uh, I don't think there's room for anyone in the ground going up to heaven, to be honest. So you think there's no proof for God's existence? Yes, I would think that's... So let me ask you a question and think before you answer. Owen, do you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything? Because that's what an atheist believes. As you said, I think before I speak, I, I don't know that much, to be honest, or I don't... You're defaulting to agnosticism. You're not saying there's no God. It's just now you don't know. Uh, well, no, I I would consider myself an atheist in terms of the afterlife was kind of your first question. I, w- I just don't know where we came from in the first place, to be honest. So you're kind of lost. You don't know where we came from. You don't know what our origins are. Therefore, you don't know what your purpose is here on Earth. And you don't know where you're going to. That's a definition of lost, Owen. <laughs> exactly like the Bible maybe, says. Maybe that's why I'm here. Uh, um, yeah, maybe I am lost. So let me, let me prove to you God's existence scientifically. It's very simple, but it is scientific. The word science just means knowledge. But um, when you look at a building, what proof is there that there was a builder? In the floor. What did you just say? Um... Let me help you. First place. Well, if well, you see the building being built. No, even if the builder died 300 years ago, you know there was a builder because buildings don't build themselves. Every building is proof of a builder, isn't that right? Yeah, that would be correct, yeah. So when you look at a painting, even though it was painted like 500 years ago and the painter's dead, you know there was a painter because paintings don't paint themselves. So when you look at creation, flowers, birds, the trees, the season, sun, the moon, the stars, puppies, kittens all these things that surround us, you can see the genius of God's creative hand. So we not only know God exists by common sense, but we know intuitively God's given light to every man. And we know he demands morality because we have a conscience. Do you have a conscience? I have a conscience, yes. Where did that come from? I think just past experiences and maybe my upbringing. Well, I think conscience is God-given but society-shaped. You know, you know intuitively it's wrong to murder, it's wrong to steal, wrong to lie. If you were brought up by wolves and you were, found yourself in New York on trial for murdering a young lady and you said, oh, judge, I didn't know right from wrong, I was brought up by wolves, he'd still throw you in jail because he knows that you intuitively know it's wrong to murder and to lie and steal. So are you a good person? I would consider myself a good person, yes. Know how to tell if you're a good person? What's the Ten Commandments? Now, do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments or broken them? I wouldn't even know them, so I would... Oh, you shall not steal. Have you ever stolen something in your life, even if it's small? No. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? An awful lot. An awful lot? Did you just tell another one a minute ago when you said you've never stolen anything? I've never stolen in my life. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I did. I did it in this interview already. Yeah, you used the name of Jesus in blasphemy. Now, why did you do that? Why did you use his name and not Hitler's name or Mother Teresa or Napoleon? Why, why his name? If you study history, his is the only name that's used as a cuss word. Do you know why that is? I don't know. Well, in John chapter 7, Jesus explained why. He said, the world hates me because I testify of its deeds that they're evil. We hate God and Jesus for the same reason criminals hate the police. They call them pigs, and they'll even kill a police officer, not because of who he is, but because he stands for righteousness and that which is good and just. Okay, one to go, and I appreciate your honesty, Owen. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Have you had sex before marriage? Yes. So I'm going to quick summation. I'm not judging you, but you've just told me you're a liar, probably a thief because I can't trust you if you told me you're an incessant liar, a blasphemer, a fornicator, and an adulterer at heart. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, we've looked at four or five, 
you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Now, does that concern you? Not really. Well, you didn't say no. You said not really. There's something in you that says, man, I don't want to end up in hell. I don't want to lose my life. It's precious. Uh, would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? No. Would you sell them both for a hundred million? No. Your eyes are without price. They're so valuable to you. So how much more is your soul, that life that looks out those windows we call eyes? So you don't want to end up in hell. You don't want to be damned. You don't want to lose your soul. I'm horrified for you. Seriously, I love you, I care about you, and I hate you end up in hell. Now tell me, you're a Protestant background. What did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you know? No. Well, Jesus died on the cross. Oh, no, I, know, sorry. I thought you were talking about me and as a Protestant background. Yeah, I know, I know that much. Yeah. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. It's as simple as that. That's why he cried out just before he died, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. Oh, and if you're in court, even though you're guilty, if someone pays your fine, the judge can let you go. He can say, Owen, you've got a stack of speeding fines, but someone's paid him. You're out of here. and can do that which is legal and right and just because someone paid your fine. Well, God can legally dismiss your case, forgive your crimes, forgive your sins, and let you live forever legally because of what Jesus did on the cross for his death and resurrection. What you have to do in response is repent and trust in him. Don't just say, God, I'm sorry, but actually turn from your sins. Don't play the hypocrite. And trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. You know, if you were going to jump out of a plane and you didn't see a danger, if I said to you, are you scared of jumping? And you answer me, not really. The best thing I could do for you is hang you out the plane by your ankles for about two seconds. And you go, whoa, give me the parachute. And I've tried my best to hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a moment to show you it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, death is... a uh, death is evidence God is serious about sin. You're under the death sentence because of your crimes against God, but he offers you forgiveness of sins and everlasting life as a free gift. So you're going to think about what we talked about today? I've never thought about it as much. <laughs> I appreciate you listening to me. I'm going to give you uh, something for you to look at a little later, but um, Owen, thanks for your honesty. Thanks for, thanks for listening to me, and perhaps you could talk to your friends about it when, when you leave here.